Hey, this is Gabe. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be making a black and gray or dark gray uh, swirl ebonite. You can kind of see the swirl in there. But uh, this is like a Cumberland ebonite. Um, that is the makings of a pen. We have the cap, the body, and the section. And I'm going to be using a spoon for a clip. Spoon looks like this. Sort of cut down a little bit. And then um, I need to polish that up. Uh, and uh, I'll link a video in the description on how I made a clip like this using one of these. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. First step, I'm going to be, oh, I am going to be making a tapered cap. So, and uh, I'm, this is going to be a 14 millimeter triple start tap and die. First things first, I want to dimple the back end or the top of the cap. I don't need to worry about squaring that off. I have my drill bit marked right here at two and three eighths inch deep into the cap. Okay, now we're going to clean that out with a 3364 the same depth. Now I'm just going to run this in here. It's um, probably about five eighths deep uh, with the th 14 millimeter tap, th triple start tap. Oh, that has to be loose. That's right. On the inside right here, I just want to take my parting tool and just relieve that edge. That way when the, uh, the body goes in, it, it can start a lot easier because it's a tapered start, just like a regular nut and bolt. Using my homemade Ebonite mandrel, this is for the body on this side. This is a triple start mandrel. This is for the cap. This is for the section. That will go on here like that. I can use the four jaw chuck or the cola chuck, whichever I prefer to use. Now this side I dimpled earlier that I showed you, so that is my live center. That will support the back side while I turn that down. So on this end of the cap, I want to turn it down to about 17 and a half millimeters and towards the top about 13 and a half. And I'm going to be making a push cut this way so that all this stuff will land in here and get sucked in.
that's pretty much right where we want it. So I just need to cut off the end right there where that dimple is. And then um, I'll just do that off camera real quick. We won't waste our time watching that. I'm just gonna uh, part it off, no big deal. And then we'll just go ahead and drill out the body and go from there. Okay, so to speed things up, I took my 14 millimeter triple start tamp. I marked it 14 millimeters with this. I turned this down to 14 millimeters to the same thickness as this. So that now all we have to do is run our die on the outside. So I'm going to be using my floating die holder. This is the 14 millimeter triple start die I have in here. Uh, if you've never used taps and dies before, uh, this is uh, these are not are not cheap. And um, if you're going to use these, uh, make sure you put it in your in your die holder or whatever type of tool you're using with the numbers out uh, facing your cutting whatever it is that you're cutting. And I put a chamfer on the end so that that starts nice and easy. Uh, with acrylics, you usually have to put uh, some uh, liquid on there, but I'm not going to because ebonite cuts like a dream. done that in the past put liquid on there uh, mineral oil as a as a lubricant but it cuts the same either way switching back to my Jacobs Chuck I want to use an 11 30 seconds and I'm drilling down about three inches which is the depth for the section and uh, the, uh, the ink uh, cartridge reservoir that goes on the inside of that. Getting a little too much slip with the four jaw chuck, so I switched it around to the collet chuck. And uh, this is already in, ready to go. This is for the 10 millimeter, 10 by 075 tap for the section. This is a single start thread. starts really nice now okay now let's reverse that put that in here and we dimpled that end already so the life center has something to grip to for the cap end I want it to be about 15 and a half millimeters down to the tail, the very bottom, about 13 and a half millimeters. And uh, I have this at 15 and a half right here. 
So that's why I want that from 18 millimeters. Again, back to the carbide. Okay, so here's what we got so far the basic length of the cap and body and you can see how that goes together quite nice so the next thing to do is just uh, make a section for that and then um, off camera like I said I'll just cut off those ends so that'll uh, speed up the process a little bit and then I'm just gonna sand it and then we'll come back. Okay, for the section, same thing we did on the body. I used the calipers and sized that down to 10.075. And then um, I've got my die in there. So we're gonna go ahead and cut those threads on the outside. I wanna square off the, the back of that right there. Move that. Okay, with my thin parting tool, I just wanna cut down just below those threads so that when I screw that section in, it makes it nice and flush. Now, in theory, Because I relieved the, the inside right there, it should sit all the way, but sometimes it does not. Let me check that and see. See, it's starting to bind up a little bit, so I want to relieve some of that shoulder. And so I'm not spending so much time threading that section in here. I want to remove uh, an eighth of an inch so that that goes off and on a lot quicker. That's much nicer. Now I just need to mark this for an inch, which is pretty close to that by the time I square off that end. 
Okay, so that's squared off right here. The end is way back here, not right there. So it's back a little further. I'm gonna go, I'm using 11 30 seconds, just about a 16th of an inch. Okay, now I'm using a 1964, so a half an inch deep to that line. Okay, now I have a seven millimeter, and I'm gonna run that all the way through. And that's already, that's half an inch deep inside there. To where I bottom out, and just back it up just a little bit. Now I'm using my Joa number six tap, and that is a M7.4-5D3 made by Tapco. I've had people ask me about what that is that I use, so that's what that is. only going in very little because it's only about a eighth of an inch where the section grabs inside there okay so as you can see that's the basics of our section and that fits in there really nice nice and flush just need to turn that down to a half an inch uh, with a little bit of a contour on the inside and uh, that will look really nice okay time to switch gears back to the mandrel I switched out the four jaw chuck with the collet chuck this gets screwed into here goes in there Voila. make sure that's tight live center So there is our section. And uh, you get the basic idea. Okay, welcome back. Uh, I took some time off camera sanding these down to final shape and the ends, as you can see, um, they all look pretty good. So we're just ready next to start to do the uh, micro mesh finish on these, starting out with 1500 grit, working all the way down through to 12,000. So if you've never done this before, kind of a long process, just using uh, regular water. Make sure you put a towel down on your lathe bed so you don't get that rusty and get your motor wet underneath. So I'm just going to show how I do one because the process is, is the same uh, on all the pieces. Now with the first couple of grits, you want to be able to work 
back and forth um, to be able to get rid of all those sand lines. You don't want to see any of those. And I usually do that through to about 3,200. And then by the time I get to 3,600, um, it starts, actually 4,000 is when you're going to do all the polishing, but about 3,600 is uh, about as far as you need to go, which is about, um, or you don't need to actually do this anymore. So it makes it a lot easier to just work through the grits and a little bit quicker, but only need to do that uh, if you have a lot of lines showing, if you don't have any lines or scratches, then it makes it a lot easier. get the idea look how good that looks and you just got to do that with all three pieces and we'll come back when all those are done all right um, we are back and we have finally got this completed just finished the clip using a spoon like I showed you in the very beginning and uh, that turned out really nice you can really see that that uh, silver complements the gray swirl in the ebonite. And uh, I will see if I can find a different nib for this uh, for the pitcher. But anyway, you get the basic idea of what that will look like. Uh, I think a silver or yeah, a silver uh, colored nib would complement 
that ebonite a lot better than a gold. So anyway, if you like it, you know, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Hey, this is Gabriel Castro. Thanks for watching my YouTube channel. You can click on the link right here and subscribe. You can watch a video series right here or the latest video right here.